was Earth Truman Reservoir and the kickoff of the 1989 Bassmaster Tournament Trail. That all starts right here when the nation's top bass anglers begin a six tournament qualifying season that will earn 35 fishermen the right to compete in the World Championship of Professional Bass Angling, the Bassmasters Classic. Now today, you'll watch as one angler shoots ahead of the field to capture the Missouri Invitational. And you'll also be right in the boat with a winner and see the type of water he fishes, the lure he uses, the structure he fishes, and the winning retrieve method. I'm Ray Scott. Stay tuned in the Bass Masters. We'll be right back. Truman Lake, the 55,600 surface acres site of the $155,000 Bassmaster Missouri Invitational. The kickoff of the 1989 BASS Tournament Trail. On the road to the Bassmasters Classic, the World Championship of Professional Bass Angling. Frequent and recent weather changes have relocated many of the bass here on Truman. A cold front of a few days ago dropped the water temperature into the high 60s and moved the bait fish to the middle of the coves and into the creeks. Some of the creeks and river arms are dirty, but there's also clear water in many sections of the impoundment, areas where the bass will suspend over and in structure. For many of these bass masters this first day, locating the bass along Truman Lake's 958 miles of shoreline and out on the flats is like finding small needles in large haystacks. The daily limit for this tournament is five bass 15 inches or longer. And there are monster bass here, but predictions are that it will take only 35 to 45 total pounds to win the $33,000 top prize. This Missouri impoundment is considered an excellent fall producer. However, it usually takes colder water than these anglers are fishing to really turn on the bass. But regardless of conditions, someone always locates and catches the bass. Like here at the first day weigh-in. Ron Shera, folks, we have a great television show, Ron Shera Outdoors. And the weight, 10 pounds and two ounces, and that's a great start. Let's give him a nice hand, folks. Ron Shera, who's a, who's a daddy to be, by the way. Now, next is Hank Parker, North Carolina. They were partners today, and Hank got a limit. How about that? Oh, who rode in the front of the boat? Folks, the biggest weight of the day. Watch the scales. 19 pounds, 15 ounces for Hank Parker. Let's give him a nice hand. Hold up two or three of the bigger bass. Folks, he is clearly our leader. He was fishing with Ron Shearer. Ron, these are, these are knockout bass. And I want to tell you, folks, this is a good When you can bring in five bass that weigh 20 pounds, you are doing some good fishing, doing some tremendous fishing. Now, we'll put them back in a basket, send them back to the, uh, back to the waterway. Hank, uh, we, we can weigh as big one if you like. Is, it, is that the biggest one there? Yeah. 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 Wait, wait, one of those. That one there looks like, yeah. We sent them on. We, we just weighed. Uh, we, well, this is, this is going to be four pounds and uh, something. Woo. <laughs> I bet a dollar. Listen, Hank, I got to tell you something. It's uh. It's very unusual, folks. I want to tell you something. We had uh, two real bulls in the boat today by the drawing system. We had, um, we had Ron Shera, who's a tremendous fisherman in his own right, and, of course, Hank Parker. Both of them are top pros, always classic contenders. And uh, a lot of people say, why don't you prepare the pro? Well, it happened by the drawing system. And today, two really tremendous fishermen who normally are the leaders in the boat were both in the boat. And they had to make the decision last night, and together they went out and caught a bunch of fish. I don't know what the total weight was, but I would imagine you're looking at, what, 30-odd pounds? About 30 pounds, one ounce. But we work together well. I like drawing a person like Ron. We work very hard together. We fish together as a team today. We'll compete tomorrow. And it always seems to work better for me to draw one of the, one of the more aggressive fishermen. It keeps me on my toes, and we both stood in the front all day. Ron's a very courteous fisherman. He helped me get the bigger fish in the boat. Uh, it was just uh, he take a shot and I take a shot type deal, and I was just fortunate enough to catch the big ones. I want to ask you one thing. How did you decide last night which fish you'd go to? Because I know both, you both had different waters. Well, we were fishing very close together, and uh, Ron, had he was on some fish that uh, were in the two to three pound range, and I told him, I said, about half of the fish that I'm on seem to be four or five pound fish. I don't have a whole lot of fish, but I think if a person just stays at it all day, you can hammer out a limit, and, and you're going to get a couple four or five pounders. So he decided that uh, 
he'd go look at my water first and if it panned out and we didn't catch any fish right off the bat we worked real hard before we started catching any fish and uh, had to make a few adaptions of what i found in practice and uh, he was uh, willing to stay the rest of the day just based on what it looked like he knew it had the potential and that's that's a benefit of having a real pro with you well i certainly would agree with that let's give a nice hand folks hank parker north carolina Although Hank Parker carries almost a five-pound lead going into the second day of the Missouri Invitational, there are many Bassmasters here capable of catching big strings of bass. Like Missouri angler Rufus Harris, who's in second place. And Oklahoma's Jimmy Houston, who's always a threat when the fish are on a spinnerbait pattern. Nor can Missouri's Charlie Campbell be counted out. In ninth place this morning and only about eight pounds behind the leader, Campbell has proven he can catch fish in this tournament. But he seems to be having some trouble with this bass. Once again, the sure hand of Bassmaster teamwork comes into play to keep Charlie from joining his bass in the bush. every tournament is what takes place at the scales, like here. Hank Parker, folks, our leader yesterday with four, uh, 12, 19 pounds and five, 15 ounces. Today, another limited bass. And the weight, 13 pounds and eight ounces. Folks, our leader, Hank Parker, is holding on to the lead solidly. Hank, uh, we've got to ask, a lot of people here are curious, can you tell us anything at all? Uh, I know this is the end of the second day with one to go. Uh, you've got some magic working, and we sure would like to know what's happening. Well, it was really difficult for me today. I didn't have but one little bitty fish at noon, and I'm making a real long boat run. I have to leave up there about 1.15, 1 1.20. 1 and I was really sweating it out, but uh, I found one little area and made a few changes and made a little move and uh, was fortunate enough to catch a limit. But I didn't get very many bites today at all. It was really tough for me. I, I don't think I had a bite till about 11 o'clock, uh, not even a non-keeper. The water that I was fishing yesterday was basically dead today. I had to make a move. Uh, so you caught these bass in another spot? Well, I caught them about uh, two miles from where I caught them yesterday or so. Well, I guess you told me more than I expected, but tomorrow we want to know the whole story because right now you're silently in the lead, and congratulations. Well, I appreciate the fish that I'm catching, Ray, I will say this, uh, are fish that are not really feeding. It's, it's really hard to get these fish to hit. You have to, ha you have to make a presentation to them in a way to get them to strike out of impulse. You can't go in there and finesse and get them to hit. Uh, it's, it's a deal where you just have to kind of sneak up and get them to attack it before they ever realize what's going on. I think you told us enough. If you go any more, you may be lying. Good luck to you, Hank Parker. The weather changes this final day of the Missouri Invitational. Clouds and rain and colder temperatures. And Hank Parker sets his goal. I really don't know exactly what to expect. I've got a pretty good lead going in. Uh, I, I definitely want to win this tournament now. I'm expected to win it with a 12-pound lead going in the last day, so it uh, puts a little added pressure. I just hope that I've got enough mixing water that I can still catch a few fish. I think maybe... Uh, six or eight pounds i could probably win this tournament i think pretty comfortable with if i could catch 10 or 12 pounds and that's what i'm gonna that's my goal for today to go out and catch 12 pounds but it almost seems as if this north carolina bassmaster could stay in the great warm and dry indoors at least some anglers feel that way but uh, right now it's pretty much a tournament for second place but don't tell hank i said that <laughs> but as hank parker well knows it's never over till it's over and once more, he makes the long boat ride to his water. Stay tuned as the Bassmaster Missouri Invitational heads into the last weigh-in. The Bassmasters will be right back. When it comes to crowning the champ at this last weigh-in of the Missouri Invitational, Jimmy Houston was right. Hank Parker really could have stayed on the bank this morning. 
Now, folks, here's our leader from North Carolina with two bass today, Mr. Hank Parker. Let's give him a good welcome. Leading this tournament in a big way with 33 pounds and seven ounces yesterday. Weight today, seven pounds, seven ounces. Let's give him a great hand for two outstanding bass. If you would, show them to the people. Folks, there is your winner of this tournament right here, Hank Parker. And folks, when you got a lead like he had yesterday, uh, that's about 13, 14 pounds of bass. These two here don't guarantee it, but it's almost a surety. Hank has had a remarkable tournament. He's a, he's a very well-known fisherman, as you know. Has a great outdoor show back home in North Carolina. Fishes in the Classic every year. But he it's not often you can go into the third day and almost take a nap. Now, I know you didn't because you know there's always one guy that can kill you. But uh, when you caught that second bass today, the pressure relieved a little bit, did it not? It's been a tough day. I, uh, I've done this about three times now. I've led by a pretty good margin going in the last day, and uh, I've gotten beat twice, uh, two out of three times. So uh, I really fished hard today. I tried to catch a big string of fish because you never do know. And I felt like three fish would win it for me. And then when I came in, everybody said it was pretty tough today, and Stacy King didn't catch a whole lot of fish today. So. I was pretty well relieved when I got back, but I've been sweating it pretty well all day, and I got about an hour and 10 minute boat ride, you know, hour and 15 minutes, so uh, you have a lot of time to think. This may have seemed to be an easy tournament for Hank Parker, but for the past three days, he's made an hour and 15 minute commute to work every morning, and the same coming back. But that 150 mile trip every day was worth $33,000 to the personable angler from North Carolina. Here's how he won the Bassmaster Missouri Invitational. What you have to do is just, now like this creek, it's like 10 or 11, 12 miles long. And you just have to put that troll motor pretty well on medium or, or uh, high and go down through here hitting the best cover till you find the shad. And when you find those shad flicking, you see, like today, it's cloudy and you're not going to be able to see the shad on the water. You have to wait for them to pop the surface. And when you see your shad flicking, then that's the area you concentrate on. Then you turn your troll motor down to low and then you work it really good. But until you find the shad, just keep that troll motor on high and just hit it quick and go. And that's the way I did every day. I'd just, I'd come in and the fish are real spooky, so I didn't want to run the big motor by them. And then uh, once I found the shad, uh, by running the troll motor high, just going and throwing. And once I found the shad, uh, if I had to win, I just let the wind blow me. I wouldn't even hit the troll motor again. I just let the wind push me and I'd go real easy or either keep the boat right out in the center of the channel and troll motor really slow. All right. Come here, big boy. How about that? That's kind of tournament that you don't really need to hear. You know, that's not a real bad little fish, but uh, uh, 15 inch size limit, you know, that, that one needs two more years to be a keeper. Well, that, that wasn't a real big fish, but that fish was exactly the way I caught my fish during the tournament. You had to bring that bait exactly parallel with that log. Now, we got this little log laying here, and the first thing you do, you got to have your boat in the exact right position to make the presentation. And then you cast the bait just like that. And see how I'm bringing it right down that log? It's exactly the way I caught them. And just as you get to the end of the log, anticipating where that fish would be, kind of drop that bait, just let it fade out of sight. That's when it hit it. The Bassmasters will return with Missouri champion Hank Parker as he explains his lure selection and further demonstrates his winning ways. We'll be right back. Where did all these little fellas come from? The spinner bait that I was using, it's a bait, it's a hog collar bait made in North Carolina, but I make them up myself. I just get the heads and the blades. And this combination, I experimented with a lot. I use a lot of willow leaves and, uh, uh, of course, the Colorado. But here, I've got an interesting concept. I've got a number three Colorado blade and then a number six Indiana blade. Uh, the Indiana blade does not put off quite the vibration that the Colorado blade and puts off a little bit more than the willow leaf, but it adds a lot of flash and it's a good blade on the fall. And when I would run these baits up by the log, like I was talking about, uh, when I'd stop that bait and let it fall, the Indiana had uh, had a better fall. It, it put off more flash, 
and twirl better on the fall than any other blade combination that I put together. So I experimented with spinner baits, and this is the one that I came up with, and it, it seemed to work the best. I actually used three different colors. Uh, the first day, the water was a little bit dingier. The first day, we'd had a lot of rain, and I used chartreuse. And then the second day, in the real bright sun, I used a white bait like I have here. And then the last day, I changed the blue and chartreuse because it was so cloudy and the water was not as muddy as it was the first day, and that would look like a good color combination that seemed to work for me. That is a good looking log. Uh, that log is, is the right depth. Uh, you can see it comes all the way out. Uh, see, I can keep that bait parallel and keep it kind of what I call bumping the bark all the way out. Uh, it doesn't go out of sight. It lays well in the water. Uh, that, that's my kind of log. And a lot of people say, well, what is a, what is a good looking log? Uh, a log just exactly like that, that lays in enough depth of water that it eventually does taper and go out of sight, but runs out into the water for a long way where you can keep that bait. That way that fish can suspend on any part of that log and you can still keep the, the bait, what I call bumping the bark, and keep it in sight. There he is. Just right by the log. Oh, I don't quite make 15 inches, but chunky little fish. That's one thing about these Truman Lake fish. Uh, they're healthy fish. They're not, uh, you're not gonna catch a lot of 10 pounders like you do in Florida. But as far as catching a grade, uh, I guess I had nearly a four pound average for the tournament, man. That's good, that's good for Florida. That's good for Mexico or Cuba, anywhere in the world. I mean, that's, that's a good average in Truman. Uh, has really got quality fish and probably as much shad or more shad than any lake I've ever seen in my life. It is a very healthy lake. There he is. Where'd all these little fellas come from? Well, that's not a Truman fish. These fish are supposed to be four and five pounds. I'm glad they're in here today and not yesterday. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't want to catch these. But you know, whether it's a 10-inch fish or a four-pound fish, the way I'm getting these fish to hit and the way I caught the fish to win this tournament is with this spinner bait, uh, bringing it right along the log, bumping the stump, keeping it what I call bumping the bark, keeping that bait parallel to that cover, uh, and you almost have to anticipate where that fish is at. And you bump that log, bring it right there, and you get that fish to react out, out of impulse. He, he doesn't have time to think about anything. I mean, the bait is just there, so he'll strike it. And a spinner bait is probably the best bait that I know to do that. See, this water is eight or 10 feet deep, and this cover comes all the way up uh, to the surface. And these fish are not related at all to the bottom, so a jig's not effective, uh, a worm's not effective, flipping wasn't effective. The only way I could catch these fish is to throw that spinner bait and keep it coming right parallel with that structure. Boom, catch a fish. And now it's time for the pro's pointer, the how-to section of the Bassmasters, brought to you by AC Delco. Now, catching fish under these conditions, uh, the fish are not very aggressive and they're, and they're not feeding. Uh, you gotta get them to react to that bait out of impulse and you gotta do it on the first cast. And in order to do that, you gotta stay uh, and keep that bait right on the base of the log. Now like this tree here, uh, this is a big tree, has a lot of potential, but if you're gonna catch that fish, you need to make that first cast count. And coming in this direction, the way this tree's lined, it's absolutely no way to make that one cast uh, from this direction. So go beyond the tree, turn around and get your boat. That's the critical part, is getting your boat in a position where you can make that cast right down the base of the tree. And now everything's right, and come right up that tree right down the base, you cover the whole tree in one cast. And if he's in there, he can't hardly stand that. Parker.
Walker, and the 1989 Road to the Bassmaster Classic is underway. Now, next week, we're going north for the Michigan's mighty smallmouth on Lake St. Clair and in the shadows, really, of downtown Detroit skyscrapers. You'll watch some of the greatest smallmouth fishing you'll ever see. Wild jumping brown bass up to four pounds and lots of them caught on real life tackle. It's a show.